Hello, this is Professor Keen. Today I want to do an exercise that uses Newton's laws of motion to analyze tension forces. So this is a practice problem involving tension forces. Over this lecture, and I guess the last lecture and the next couple lectures, I'm just going to be working through example problems for you. Okay, so let's suppose that we have the following setup. So we've got a ceiling right here, this is kind of a corner of a room, and we have a ball right here, and it is suspended by two strings, one of them connected at a 45 degree angle. So here's the angle theta, which I'll specify, specify to be 45 degrees, and another horizontal string like this. So there are two strings connected here, connected here, connected here, and connected here to this ball. And I want you to draw a free body diagram for the ball suspended by the strings. So draw a free body or force diagram for this ball. And let me tell you also that the mass of this is 0 0.1 kilograms. So I want you to draw a free body diagram for the ball and evaluate all of the forces. In other words, tell me what the values of the forces with which this string is pulling up on the ball and with this string is pulling to the left on the ball, and of course the weight, okay? By the way, the force that is in each of these strings, typically we say that force is a tension force. Uh, typically we say there's tension in a rope or in a string, although that's a bit misleading. Strictly speaking, when we talk about a tension force, we mean the force that is exerted by the string or the rope on the thing to which it is attached. So the tension force is the force with which this string pulls on the ball, it also happens to be the force with which that string pulls on the ceiling, right, by Newton's third law. If the ceiling is pulling on the, on the ball using the string, then, then the ball is pulling on the ceiling using the string, okay? And likewise, the tension force exerted by this string is the tension force. It's the force that it exerts on the ball pulling to the left, but it's also the force with which the string pulls on the wall to the right. But once again, since we're only drawing the free body diagram for the ball, I don't need to draw the forces with which the string is pulling on the ceiling and with which this string is pulling on the wall. Okay, so here's our strategy for solving this problem. First of all, I'll just kind of lay out the steps because these steps are the typical steps one does in solving just about any of these problems. So first of all, draw the free body diagram. The second step is going to be to set up a coordinate system that is appropriate for this problem and write Newton's second law in coordinate form. I'll explain what I mean by this in a moment. So set up a coordinate system and write Newton's second law in coordinate form. Step three is identify any constraints that are going to help you solve the problem. So for example, is the acceleration in any direction equal to zero? Um, does Newton's third law impl imply any constraints? So we'll use that. And second, uh, fourth, solve for all of the forces. Okay, so that is the basic strategy for solving this problem, and it's going to be the same strategy we use on a number of problems. Okay, so step one. Step one is draw a free body diagram. So I'm going to represent this mass by a dot, and then each of the forces that are acting on it I'm going to represent by an arrow. So there is going to be a force that is pointing up this way diagonally. I'll call that T1, the tension force. Then there's another force horizontally. I'll call this force T2. That's another tension force. It's a force with which that string right over here is pulling on it. And then finally, there is the force of gravity or the weight of the ball. That's the force with which the Earth pulls down on it. OK, there we go. We have accomplished step number one. Now, step number two, we want to set up a coordinate system and write Newton's second law in coordinate form. Okay. Now, we have quite a bit of latitude in how we set up the coordinate system here, and it's kind of an art form, choosing the best coordinate system, but you'll get the hang of this. One of the ideas is you want to draw a, typically a Cartesian coordinate system, but sometimes you can use polar coordinate systems. We'll primarily focus on Cartesian coordinate systems in this class, although we will, when we're talking about rotational motion, we'll use polar coordinate systems as well. In this problem right here, you can see that there are forces directed in this direction, this direction diagonally, so we are going to choose a coordinate system that is aligned, um, aligned with some of those forces. So I'm going to pick a coordinate system that looks like this. This will be our x direction, and this will be our y direction. Vertically, the y direction, x direction will be that way. Okay. 
All right, that's going to allow us to write these forces in coordinate form using Newton's second law. So that's the direction in the x direction, that's the direction in the y direction. Now we can consider the x direction and the y direction separately. So let's write Newton's second law. Okay, well, Newton's second law says force equals mass times accel acceleration. In particular, the sum of all of the forces, that's a sigma, Greek letter sigma for sum, the sum of all the forces that are pointing along the x-axis is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration along the x-axis. And similarly, in the y direction, the sum of all of the forces that are directed in the y direction is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Okay, So this is writing Newton's second law in component form, in terms of the x components and in terms of the y components. The x component of the forces lead to acceleration in the x direction. The y components of the forces lead to acceleration in the y direction. OK, uh, so let's let's actually let's write this out in a little more detail in the x direction. What are the forces in the x direction? Well, the x direction is a horizontal direction. So we can see right away this tension force is in the y direction and it is going to be a negative in the negative y direction. So I'll call it negative T2 equals mass times the acceleration in the x direction. But notice also that this tension force can be decomposed, as we talked about in the last lecture, into an x component and a y component. So here, let's do this. Let's write, let's decompose the tension into tension one in the x direction and a tension one in the y direction. Okay, so what are the, in the plugging this T1x into this formula, we have T1x, it's in the positive x direction, T2 in the negative x direction, and that equals mass times acceleration in the x direction. Okay, what about the y component forces? Well, we've got T1y minus w equals the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Okay, so I've just, I've expressly written these forces in their x and y components. All right, now step three. Step three says identify any constraints and plug these into these equations, all right? So um, we know, since this ball is sitting still, that its acceleration must be zero in both the x direction and the y direction. That means ax is zero and ay are zero. So we know that ax equals zero. That implies that this equation right here can be written as t1x minus t2 equals zero. We also know that the acceleration in the y direction is zero. The ball is not accelerating up or down. Therefore, T1y minus w has to be equal to zero. Okay, so that's those are two constraints we're applying that are going to simplify these equations. Um, we also know um, something else about T1 and T1x and T1y. So another constraint we have is because let me draw something else here. Oops, let me go like this. We know that this angle is 45 degrees right here. That's what I told you over here, which means that this angle here is 45 degrees as well. So if this angle is theta is 45, this angle is theta is 45, that implies that T1y and T1x have the exact same size because this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. The two sides of that must be the same. So we know that T1x is going to be equal to T1y um, by geometry. If I'd given you a different angle here, then there'd be some relationship between those relating related by trigonometric uh, identities. Okay, but because we know this, that is going to simplify our two equations. So maybe I'll call this equation one and equation two. Or you know what? Tell you what. Let me actually just call those equation x and equation y, since that's what I was doing before. So the x equation then becomes well t one x. Um, let's move the t two to the other side, and the y equation. We can also write well. Let me see, t1y equals w. And we know that this is going to be equal to that. We know t1x equals t1y. We also know that the weight is going to be equal to mg, which is equal to 0 0.1 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity, which we use 10 meters per second squared. OK, so that's another constraint. All right. And since we know all these things, we know now we know the weight. So we know the weight is equal to 0.1 times 10 would be 1 newton. The weight is 1 newton. And we, since the weight is 1 newton, that means that T1y also is going to be 1 newton by equation y. And then we also know that T1x has to be 1 newton 
that's by geometry. And since T1x is 1 newton, we know T2 has to be 1 newton. So we basically have found all these, all these forces now. The weight, T1x, T1y, and T2. The nice thing also is we can actually, we weren't asking originally what T1x and T1y were. We were asking what the tension T1 is. But we can just use um, Pythagorean theorem now to get T1. So we say T1 is going to be T1x squared plus T1y squared square root, which is going to be the square root of 2 newtons. So now we know T1 is root 2 newtons. And we have completely solved this problem. We know the tension that is in string 1, that square root of 2 newtons. We know the tension that is in string 2, that is the, the force with which string 2 pulls on the ball. And we know the weight of the ball. So we have completely solved this static problem, that is this problem where the ball is sitting still. How did we do this? We first set up a free body diagram. The next thing we did is we set up a coordinate system. And we wrote Newton's second law in coordinate forms. Then we started identifying constraints, saying the accelerations were zero, and by geometry, the components of this tension force were equal. And then we used the relationship between mass and weight. And then we solved for what all the forces were. So that is the strategy for solving a problem like this. And I will stop there.